哎，问声。Donnie Yen is a Chinese-born actor, fight and stunt coordinator, director, and producer. He became an idol for Asian action fans all over the world and achieved success in Hollywood. We will tell you how he did it in this video. Ip Man: How Donnie Yen lives and what he spends his millions on. The actor's real name is Yen Chitan. And he was born on July 27, 1963, in the southern Chinese city of Guangzhou, also known as Canton. In the Beijing dialect, his surname is pronounced Zhen, and Yen is the Cantonese pronunciation. The father of the family, Kleister Yen, was a violinist, and his mother, Bao Sim Mok, was a vocalist in the Guangzhou Symphony Orchestra. There they met, but two years after the birth of their son, the family split up. The father and the child emigrated to Hong Kong, but the authorities did not allow Mark to move. Only at the age of nine, the boy managed to see his mother again, and the family was finally reunited with the birth of his younger sister Chris. During the separation, Mark mastered martial arts and dreamed of opening her own school in Hong Kong. But she ran into the local mafia there, and the market was already divided. Mark also taught her children martial arts. Therefore, it's not surprising that Chris is also a master of martial arts. And in the thousands, she tried herself in the cinema. The parents also cultivated a love of music in their children. Donnie plays the piano and several other instruments very well, but his main passion remained martial arts. The boy studied specialized books and repeated everything, regardless of style. When he was 11 years old, the Yen family moved to the United States, settling into the suburbs of Boston. Across the ocean, Donnie's father worked as an editor of a Chinese language newspaper, and Mark finally managed to realize her dream and founded the Chinese Wushu Research Institute. The school quickly became popular, and Donnie became one of the best students. He closely watched movies with his favorite actor fighters, Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan, and repeated their tricks. But he treated Chuck Norris with disdain because he could easily distinguish which films show real Chinese martial arts and which are fake. As a teenager, Donnie began practicing Japanese karate, Korean taekwondo, and Western boxing, as well as hip hop and break dancing. He started skipping school and spent time in the infamous combat zone, the criminal district of Boston. The teenager participated in underground MMA fights. Started leading a nightlife and even joined a gang. To protect her son from gang life, Donnie's mom sent him to Beijing on a four-year training program with the Beijing Wuzhou team. In 1983, Yen decided to return to the United States, intending to establish his own martial arts school in Hollywood. But before leaving, he stopped by Hong Kong so that a friend of his mother, at her own request, would evaluate Donnie's fighting abilities. This friend was the director Yuan Wu Ping, who immediately invited the young man to audition for his new comedy thriller Drunken Tai Chi, also known as Drunken Tai Chi Master. That'll teach you to pull around me, little boy. Oh, oh. oh. yo, Master, are you okay, sir? That fat bitch. It's only because she waits two times. In just five minutes, Yen impressed the crew and was approved for the lead role. The film was released in 1984, but Donnie didn't like the filming process. He was annoyed by the director, who explained almost nothing but would yell if he didn't like something. At that time, Yen didn't think for a minute that he could stay in the cinema for a long time, and nevertheless, the collaboration with Yuan Wu Ping continued. A year later, the film *Mismatched Couples* was released, on the set of which the actor suffered a severe injury to his right shoulder. It still bothers him to this day. This was followed by two parts of the film *Tiger Cage* and the action movie *In the Line of Duty 4: Witness*, also directed by Yuan Wu Ping. The master revealed to Donnie the specifics of staging combat scenes in movies, and over the years of cooperation, the actor has worked out his own style of on-screen combat. Then Donnie began to work with other directors and starred in the films *Holy Virgin vs. the Evil Dead*, *Crystal Hunt*, *New Dragon Gate Inn*, *Cheetah on Fire*, *Butterfly and Sword*, and but the role in the action movie *Once Upon a Time in China 2*, where he starred with Jet Li in 1992, became a landmark for Yen. <laughs> 王師傅不愧係民團總教練，失禮失禮，大人見笑。頭先只不過向王師傅請教幾招，王師傅嘅少林棍法可以名不虛傳。This work earned Donnie a nomination for the Hong Kong Film Award in the category Best Supporting Actor. In 1993, the actor reunited with Wu Ping on the set of the action movie Iron Monkey. Hmm. Have you heard of Tian Ma Long? Gai Zhi Hong Men? Ah, you want to find him? 
And the film turned out to be a success and was remembered for the fight scene with Shaolin monks, which Donnie directed. Ironically, this particular fragment was largely the result of film editing and flying on cables, but almost all other scenes were painstakingly choreographed. Iron Monkey was all the more remarkable because a few years later after its release in Asia, it was acquired by the Miramax Film Studio, reworked, re-recorded, and shown in U.S. cinemas. After the premiere in New York and Los Angeles, the film received critical acclaim from American critics and a prize at the Taurus Awards Ceremony, the annual award of the World Academy of Stuntmen for the best stunts in cinema. In November of the same 1993, Donnie Yen married model Leung Xing Chi, but their family life lasted less than a year. After the breakup, Leung found out that she was pregnant, and in 1995, their son Manziok Yen was born. During this time, the actor starred in the films Hero Among Heroes, Wing Chun, where he also acted as a composer writing the soundtrack, as well as High Voltage. In the latter, he made his debut as a co-director, and in 1996, the sequel to Iron Monkey was released. Next, the audience saw the action films Ballistic Kiss, Shanghai Affairs, and Legend of the Wolf. I hope to remember who I was after seeing you. You can't understand. Every night I have nightmares. It's terrible. I can't remember. All three were directed by Yen himself. The latter is also known as the new big boss and has become a true cult classic. After his divorce from his first wife, Donnie began dating an actress and fashion model from Hong Kong named Joey Meng. Their relationship ended in 2000, but one episode that happened in the late 90s stands out a lot. The young people went to relax in one of the nightclubs in Hong Kong, and when Donnie went to make an order, eight heavily drunk men showed unwelcomed interest in Joey. They were not stopped by the presence of the boyfriend, nor his warning to move away. When the couple left the club, the company continued to chase them on the street and attacked Yen. It was a big mistake, because in the end, all eight men ended up in the hospital with fractures, abrasions, concussions, and bruises. Donnie himself only suffered a minor bruise and was arrested the next day, but was released almost immediately when the police found out it was self-defense. In 2000, the fantasy action film Highlander Endgame with Adrian Paul and Christopher Lambert in the lead roles was released. One day soon, we will all serve very little purpose to Cal except. It was the first American film in which Donnie Yen was cast. He played the immortal Jin Ki and choreographed the fight scenes. The next film, Blade II, was also an American production. And then Donnie returned to his homeland and starred with Jet Li in the fantasy action movie Hero. The movie made Yen popular among the public of mainland China, and when released in wide theaters in the United States, it became one of the most successful foreign language films ever distributed in the American market. Yen's next work was the 2003 American Hong Kong action movie Shanghai Nights with his favorite actor Jackie Chan. I hope there will be more trust between us when I'm emperor and you are the new king. At the same time, the actor's second marriage took place. He married Cecilia Wang. She was previously a model and won the Miss China beauty pageant in Toronto in 2000. They met through mutual friends at one of the parties. Their friends thought it was funny that People magazine called Yen the diamond of fighting movies and Cecilia's parents were engaged in the jewelry business. They turned out to have a lot in common. Both grew up in the West and in the East, into musicians' families, and besides, they had the same taste and views on life. Cecilia didn't watch films starring Yen, but she was impressed by his sense of humor and excellent manners. A few months later, the couple got engaged. Donnie was very anxious about the acquaintance with her father because he had quite strict rules and the age difference between the bride and groom was almost 20 years. But after talking privately for a while, Wang Sr. commonly asked when the wedding date was. Yen said that he was ready to burst into tears with happiness when he heard this. The wedding took place on August 30, 2003 in Canada on the shores of Lake Ontario in Toronto. A year later, they had a daughter, Jasmine, and then a son, James. Donnie often arranges romantic surprises for his wife, gives flowers for every holiday, and on the first anniversary, he sang a serenade of his own composition to his beloved. On the 10th anniversary, he got a tattoo on the lower back with one of the hieroglyphs of her name, meaning poetry. The actor admits that his wife is not just a beloved woman for him, but also a friend, assistant, and business partner. A romantic in life, Yen continued to star in the action films The Twins Effect 2, Seven Swords, SPL, Sha Po Lang, and Dragon Tiger Gate. However, in 2004, he also appeared in one rom-com, Love on the Rocks. In 2007, Donnie played the main role in the film Flashpoint and received an award from the Hong Kong Film Award for choreographing the fights in it. 
The actor worked so hard on the set that he had to go to the doctors every two days to recover physically. A year later, the films Painted Skin, An Empress, and The Warriors were released, but the main hit was the action movie Ip Man, about the invincible Wing Chun master who opened his own martial arts school and became known as Bruce Lee's teacher. You know, Captain Lee, we martial artists have a lot of energy. Sometimes we might be a bit loud, but that doesn't mean we're not civilized. The plot of the film was close to the original biography of Ip Man with added fiction. In terms of combat choreography and biographical data, the crew was advised by the son of Master Ip Chun. Donnie Yen himself visited the city of Foshan, where the master lived and spent a lot of time with his sons, listening to stories about their father, family life, and martial arts. Before the premiere of Ip Man, Donnie's fees were somewhere at the level of a million dollars per film, but after that, the figure increased three and a half times. In 2009, the actor appeared in a documentary about Bruce Lee, the action movie Bodyguards and Assassins, and the historical drama The Founding of a Republic. This film was released to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the foundation of the People's Republic of China, and many Chinese actors were eager to star in it, albeit in a cameo role and for free. Donnie Yen played one of the members of the Communist Party, thereby showing his loyalty to mainland China, not Hong Kong. By the way, he was repeatedly criticized for this position and ignoring the ongoing protests in Hong Kong. To one of these comments reproaching him for fighting for justice only on screen, Donnie replied that he was fighting for the Chinese people. It is worth noting that the most profitable fan base of Yen lives in mainland China. After the success of the first film about Ip Man, filming of the sequel began almost immediately. It was released in 2010. <laughs> 真的不記得了 There was even less truth about the main character in it, but the story was generously favored with action scenes and the fees exceeded the first part almost twice. Filming turned out to be difficult for Donnie, he fainted twice from overwork, and if in the previous film the creators collaborated with the master's son, this time he criticized Donnie Yen, calling him ungrateful. And the fact is that, according to the actor, the success of the films has nothing to do with the martial art of Wing Chun. Other representatives of the martial arts world and Donnie's colleagues joined the criticism. All in all, the actor is known for regularly quarreling with directors, calling them incompetent people, tyrants, and pushovers. He is unashamedly expressive, even towards the eminent masters. In the next few years, the actors starred in China and Hong Kong in such films as 14 Blades, Legends of the Fist, The Return of Chen Zhen, The Lost Bladesman, Dragon, as well as two comedies, All's Well's Ends Well 2011 and 2012. This was followed by the release of Special ID. Together, The Monkey King, Iceman, Kung Fu Jungle, and Inspector Calls, and in December 2015, the premiere of Ip Man 3 took place. <laughs> Donnie explained the long break between the second and third parts by saying that many other films and TV projects about the character were coming out, and the market was somewhat oversaturated. This time, the plot virtually doesn't overlap with the real biography of the Great Master, but the formula for success with a large number of battle scenes worked again, and the film grossed $157 million with a budget of $36 million. Donnie's wife was very worried about her husband because he had to fight Mike Tyson on the set, but her fears were unfounded. On the contrary, Yen broke the famous boxer's finger. Back in 2015, the actor established the Yen's Honor Protection Fund in order to enable celebrities to defend themselves from slander. Donnie won the money with which the organization was founded in court against director Tan Bin. He accused Yen of refusing to work on his project, and he hired bots to threaten the actor's family. In 2016, the actor played the main role in the Netflix adventure thriller Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Sword of Destiny, and in the epic space opera Rogue one. Really? I want with the force to force it with me. I want with the force. He's praying for the door to open. It bothers him because he knows it's possible. <laughs> Donnie doubted whether to accept the invitation to play in the ladder because he needed to be away from his family for a long time to film it. But his children literally forced him. 
They were so excited that their dad was going to be in a movie with lightsabers and spaceships that he couldn't resist. There in the US, Yen replaced Jet Li, who left the project for unknown reasons in the action-adventure film XXX Return of Xander Cage. The premiere took place in early 2017, and soon the actor returned to his homeland to star in the crime drama Chasing the Dragon and the comedy thriller Big Brother. At the end of 2019, it meant for the finale premiere. Despite Donnie Yen's statements that he didn't want to return to the series again, it is reported that his fee amounted to $12.8 million. In January 2020, the actor played a policeman who constantly gets into ridiculous situations in the comedy project Enter the Fat Dragon, and in March, the world saw him in the Disney movie Mulan. The actor got the role of Commander Tung, the mentor of the main character. I'm your commanding officer. Fighting will not be tolerated, am I clear? Yes, Commander. In 2021, Donnie Yen appeared in the movie Raging Fire. In 2022, he starred in the fantasy New Kung Fu Cult Master 1 and in the adventure thriller Come Back Home. The release of the action movie The Father and the film adaptation of the popular video game Sleeping Dogs is also expected. But most fans are all waiting for the fourth part of the story about John Wick with Keanu Reeves. The project is at the post-production stage, that is, filming has already ended, and the main director of the combat scenes in this film doesn't hide the fact that he giggled like a boy while working with his childhood idol. Jet Li, Jackie Chan, and Michelle Yeoh consider Donnie Yen the best fighter in modern Asian cinema. He has a sixth-degree black belt in Taekwondo, a black belt in Judo, a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and continues to master new techniques. He also introduces mixed martial arts into Asian cinema. On his social media, the actor shows great athleticism but understands that with age, his capabilities become more and more limited. He is not afraid that one day he won't be able to do what he is capable of doing now and gradually switches to directing, producing, and other work on the other side of the camera. Donnie Yen also speaks several languages. He can speak Cantonese, Mandarin, and English fluently. During the filming of one of the films, he mastered Korean and he can also understand the Shanghai dialect spoken by his wife's family. Donnie's Yen fortune is estimated at 40 million. He is considered one of the highest paid actors in Asia. Movie shooting fees are usually 7 to 8 million, but in addition, Yen has his own clothing brand, DY Edition, and a brand of sunglasses, Donnie Eye. Besides, according to media reports, one commercial featuring the actor cost companies approximately $1 million. So he advertised a remedy for back pain, hub lot watches, BMW cars, the Nike sports brand, several video games, and together with his wife, they were the faces of the brand of orthopedic mattresses and pillows, Sinomax. Yen is also involved in several projects. For example, he called for the abandonment of plastic and appeared in an advertisement for the rescue services of Hong Kong. The actor is actively engaged in charity work and in 2012, together with his wife, founded an online platform encouraging people to help others. He is an ambassador of the international organization Save the Children. In 2015, he visited refugee camps in Thailand and in 2020, he donated $130,000 to medical workers in Wuhan. Yen has at least six properties in Hong Kong, each of which, except one, was bought for $1.5 million. The exception is a house in a prestigious area of Hong Kong, which costs $17 million. The media called this mansion the most stylish fortress with a gym and living room with a grand piano standing out in particular. It is reported that this property is 80% owned by Donnie's wife and he owns only 20%. In the garage, the actor has several Lamborghinis, Bentley Continental GT, and Toyota Alphard for family trips, and his closet contains very expensive accessories. He wears a $14,000 Rolex and an Audemars Piguet worth about $70,000, and back in 2016, Donnie bought a horse named Bad Boy who participated in horse racing. The actor himself often attends horse races. Do you like movies with Donnie Yen? Antonio Banderas, where is the main macho man of Hollywood now? The real name of the actor is Jose Antonio Dominguez Bandera. He was born on August 10, 1960, in the city of Malaga, located in the south of Spain. His father, Jose Dominguez Prito, was an officer in the Spanish Civil Guard, and his mother, Ana Bandera Gallego, worked as a schoolteacher. The actor has a younger brother, Francisco Javier. 
Young Antonio didn't show much interest in studying. He was fond of soccer and planned to become a professional athlete. However, due to a broken leg, the young man had to give up his dream. At the age of 14, Antonio and his friends attended a theatrical production of Hair, the story of lovers which unfolds during the Vietnam War and the active development of the hippie movement, struck Antonio to the very heart. He decided to try acting on the stage. Antonio began his studies and became a member of the City Theatre Group. It should be noted that the actor used the stage name Antonio Abascal at first, and then he took his mother's surname as a stage name, adding the letter S at the end. Antonio showed remarkable zeal in acting, but almost no one actually took his passion seriously. When the future actor was 16 years old, he entered the School of Dramatic Art in Malaga and joined one of the city's theater groups. After graduating from the school, Antonio went to Madrid to develop as an actor. There, the young man worked as a waiter, a loader, and even as a model until he achieved inclusion in the troupe of the National Theater. During the same period, Antonio took part in the cultural movement La Mavida Madrilena, which translates as the Madrid Movement. He took part in its experimental productions and performances. Banderas was noticed by one of the brightest representatives of this movement, Pedro Almodovar, who invited him to star in his movie Labyrinth of Passion. The young actor got the role of the Islamic radical who was in love with a homosexual Muslim prince. By the way, Antonio's first fee was about 100,000 pesetas. Cooperation with the director gave an impetus to the development of Banderas' career. He began to actively appear in a large number of Spanish movies. In 1985, another impetus to Bandera's career was given by Almavarar's picture, Matador. He plays a young, simple-minded boy who takes responsibility for the murders committed by his mentor. The director doesn't personally consider this movie particularly successful. He was keener on working on the film Law of Desire, in which Bandera's played one of the key roles. The collaboration between the actor and the director continued on the set of the movie, Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown. Antonio continued to work with other directors, not only with Almavador. During this period, many films were released with his participation. The charming young actor was very popular among women. In 1987, he married the Spanish actress Ana Lessa, whom he met in a restaurant near the theater. Banderas fell deeply in love and the couple soon got married. By the way, Pedro Almodovar was the best man at the wedding. Soon, Anna gave up her career and devoted herself to her husband. She picked his wardrobe, made the casting schedule, and monitored his diet. Unfortunately, the relationship between Antonio and Pedro Almodovar was deteriorating for a long 19 years. The reason for this was the actor's refusal to participate in the filming of Kika. Banderas at this time took aim at Hollywood. His first American movie was the musical drama The Mambo Kings, where he played one of the main roles. For the sake of this picture, the actor put a lot of effort into practicing pronunciation with an English tutor. He spent six months filming in the U.S. and fell in love with this country. All of Banderas' successes at home remained at home. Antonio had to conquer the audience anew. Even though the Kings of Mambo didn't quite meet the expectations of the producers, the Spanish Macho Man was still noticed. In 1993, Antonio appeared in the melodrama The House of Spirits and in the drama Philadelphia with Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington. What's the matter with you tonight? Close the notebook. You just... Eh? This picture was highly acclaimed by the critics and viewers, and for Banderas, it became a lucky ticket to Hollywood. In 1994, Banderas starred in the drama of Love and Shadows, and played the minor role of the vampire named Armin in the movie Interview with the Vampire. Do you know how few vampires have this stamina for immortality? 1995 was a very productive year for the actor. More and more pictures with the actor were playing in the theaters. Together with Sylvester Stallone, he starred in the crime thriller Assassins, then appeared in the comedy Four Rooms and played the main roles in the drama Miami Rhapsody and the thriller Never Talk to Strangers. Robert Rodriguez's Western Desperado attracted attention from critics and the audience. I'm looking for a man who calls himself Bucho. But you had to do it the hard way. 
The role is considered one of the best works by Banderas in the 90s, and The Kiss by Banderas and his co-star Salma Hayek was nominated for the MTV Movie Award for Best Kiss. By the way, the whole film crew gathered at the shooting of the bedroom scene with the main characters, but eventually only the director and script supervisor could stay in the room. It should be noted that Banderas also showed himself as a musician on the set of the picture. The actor played the guitar in all the scenes where this was required of his character. But the next picture, the comedy Too Much, did not receive such rave reviews, but became special for the actor. On the set, he met Melanie Griffith. They were both married. Melanie was married to Don Johnson, and Antonio was still married to Anna. Although by that time, their relationship had cooled down somewhat. He was actively filming in the United States, and his wife preferred to live in Spain. After working together, the actors sometimes met with each other, and Banderas realized that he had fallen in love. He appeared at a social event together with Melanie. When Anna found out about this, she flew to the United States and found Antonio together with Melanie. They failed to improve the relationship, so the divorce proceedings began, but Anna didn't want to divorce her husband. However, when Antonio and Melanie arrived at the actor's homeland, they were received coldly not only by Banderas' ex-wife and parents, but also by the local media, which presented Melody as a homewrecker. One way or another, on May 14, 1996, in London, Antonio married Melody, and a little later, in September of the same year, their daughter Stella del Carmen Banderas Griffiths was born. By the way, Antonio managed to improve relations with Melanie's daughter from her previous marriage, Dakota Johnson. The married couple had long been considered exemplary. For the sake of her husband, the actress overcame alcohol and drug addiction, and Banderas supported his woman in all endeavors. He tried to dissuade her from plastic surgery and seemed to be an exemplary family man. By the way, it is believed that the actor fell in love with Melanie six years before he had met her. It was when he saw her in the movie Something Wild. In 1996, the musical Evita was released, where Banderas worked with Madonna. Playing the lead male role in the movie brought Antonio a Golden Globe nomination and $4 million in royalties. By the way, as the singer admitted, she had long been very interested in Antonio. Once, Madonna invited him to the premiere of a film in which she appeared, but he brought his wife there. In 1998, the movie The Mask of Zorro was released, which received high reviews from both critics and viewers. To play the role of Alejandro, Antonio spent four months training with the Spanish Olympic fencing team and, according to the coach, became a skilled fencer. For this role, the actor received the Audience Award from the European Film Academy and was nominated for a Golden Globe. Antonio Banderas became one of the biggest stars in Hollywood. Besides acting, he also tried his hand at directing. In 1999, his picture Crazy in Alabama was released, starring his wife Melanie Griffith. The movie was not particularly successful, but it became an important part of the actor's career. In the same year, the action-adventure movie The Thirteenth Warrior was released, in which Antonio played the main role. You, you could have killed him at will. Yes. What? Why the deception? Deception is the point. Any fool can calculate strength. In the same year, together with Woody Harrelson, the actor starred in the sports drama Play It to the Bone and also appeared in the comedy The White River Kid. As his popularity grew, his fees also grew. So for the participation in the movie The Body in 2000, Banderas received $12 million. The following year, Antonio became Angelina Jolie's partner on the set of Original Sin. Liar! Sin! Yes! Yes! Don't you see? Yes! Don't you see? You can't without you. The sensual movie confirmed the title of sex symbols attributed to both actors, and even Jolie had to refute the information about the affair with the Spanish macho man. In the same year, Banderas accepted the invitation from Robert Rodriguez to become a part of the adventure comedy action movie Spy Kids. And later, two more parts of this picture were released. In 2002, Antonio worked with Salma Hayek again on the set of Frida, and also plays the main role in the Franco-Swiss movie, Femme Fatale. The movie of the same year, Ballistic, X vs. Sever, was not a very successful experience. The picture received low ratings. 
In 2003, a couple of movies with the participation of the Spanish Macho Man were released. At the end of the summer, the sequel to Desperado, The Musician's Story, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, premiered, and in the fall, the drama Imagining Argentina was released. On TV, Banderas played the role of the revolutionary Pancho Villa in the HBO film of the same name. By the way, he received the Emmy and Golden Globe nominations for this role. In 2004, Antonio Banderas voiced Puss in Boots in the animated film Shrek 2. The audience extremely loved the charming and hot-tempered Puss in Boots, who became an integral part of subsequent films about Shrek, both full-length and short. By the way, with his sword, Puss in Boots carves the letter P on a tree with three swings, which is clearly a reference to Zorro. Interestingly, a year after the release of the cartoon, Antonio reappears on the screen in the image of Zorro in the movie The Legend of Zorro. Look, uh, I know what you're thinking, but Elena, Elena, listen, listen. No, here is me, here is quitting, we're this far apart. It should be noted that the hot Spanish macho man is not only a wonderful actor, but also a musician. He performs his own vocals in films if they are required. For instance, the song from the movie Desperado became a popular hit. Soy un hombre muy honrado, que me gusta lo mejor. In 2005, a star was unveiled in honor of Antonio Banderas on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. However, what goes up must come down. Antonio appeared less and less in Class A films, and in the following years, he appeared less frequently on the screen. In 2006, he starred in the drama Take the Lead. The following year, the actor co-stars with Jennifer Lopez in the crime thriller Border Town, and also takes part in the filming of the comedy My Mom's New Boyfriend. In 2008, Banderas played the role of Ralph in the dramatic thriller The Other Man, and together with Morgan Freeman, starred in the crime thriller Thick as Thieves. Don't even think about it. Think about what? Going anywhere near her. I'll rip your heart out, I mean it. It looks like it's your heart she's not so fond of. In 2009, the actor underwent surgery for a benign tumor in his back and played in several more movies in the next year. In 2011, a full-length animated picture about Puss in Boots, voiced by the legendary Macho Man, was released, as well as the adventure drama Black Gold. In the same year, the premiere of the film The Skin I Live In took place. The movie became a kind of reunion of the legendary creative duo of Antonio Banderas and Pedro Almodovar. The psychological thriller turned out to be a masterpiece and has received many awards. In 2012, the actor starred in the action movie Haywire and the fantastic comedy Ruby Sparks. In 2013, Banderas once again engaged in voice acting, this time for the cartoon Justin and the Knights of Valor. He also collaborated again with Rodriguez on the set of Machete Kills and with Almodovar in the comedy I'm So Excited. In 2014, it became public that the wife of the actor, Melanie Griffith, had filed for divorce. The reason she pointed out was that her husband cheated on her with actress Natalie Byrne. They worked together on the set of Expendables 3, but the girl stated that there were no reasons for such accusations, except for Melody's jealousy. The divorce was quite quick and scandalous. The spouses were actively dividing property. They sold the mansion in Los Angeles for $16 million and divided the profits, and also recalculated the income from projects that were implemented during their life together. As a result, Melanie got a house in Aspen and Picasso's painting, The Artist and His Model, and Banderas got a pencil drawing by the same artist along with a pencil sketch by Diego Rivera. In addition, the actor agreed to pay Griffith alimony of $780,000 a year. After the divorce, the actor was credited with a variety of relationships, including with Sharon Stone. Now his girlfriend is the Dutch financier Nicole Kempel, who brought regularity and order to Antonio's life. In subsequent years, Antonio was working in a lot of movies. He starred in the action movie Automata and the biographical drama The 33. He also appeared in the drama Night of Cups, in the Spanish drama Altamira, in the thriller Black Butterfly, and the action movie Security. In 2015, Banderas became interested in fashion and entered the famous British college Central St. Martins. According to the actor, becoming a designer was his lifelong dream. By the way, in 2016, he collaborated with Selected. The actor was the designer of a portfolio for men. 
Also in 2017, the films Bullethead, Acts of Vengeance, and the TV show Genius, which tells the story of the legendary Pablo Picasso, were released. For this role, Antonio was nominated for an Emmy and Golden Globe. Shortly before the filming of the show began, the actor had a heart attack. Everything ended well, but Antonio had to seriously revise his lifestyle. He gave up bad habits, began to exercise more often, and monitored his health. In 2018, Antonio starred in the drama Life Itself, and the next year he appeared in the movie Laundromat. He also collaborated with Pedro Amaldivar on the set of Pain and Glory, where the actor played the main role. By the way, this work brought Banderas the long-awaited first nomination for the Oscar, as well as the Golden Globe nomination. In 2020, the actor took part in the filming of Doolittle. I never understood what Lily saw in you. I come and complain to the world over for fathers of beloved daughters, but in this instance, I think we can all agree it is particularly accurate. Now the actor continues to actively play roles in movies. The filming of the comedy drama Official Competition has already been completed. The main roles in the movie are played by Antonio Banderas and Penelope Cruz. For the summer of 2021, the premiere of the comedy action movie with the star cast Hitman's Wife Bodyguard is scheduled. Uncharted starring Tom Holland, Mark Wahlberg, and Antonio Banderas is due out in February 2022. And in the fall of the same year, we will see the new animated picture about the adventures of the charming Puss in Boots. Filmmakers also announced the biographical drama Dali and the fantastic thriller Solos. In both movies, the actor is assigned the main role. Now the fortune of Antonio Banderas is $50 million. In addition to movies, Banderas has repeatedly been an ambassador of world brands, including Orbit. The audience liked the funny commercial in which the actor conducts a dialogue with a donut. He also starred in a commercial for Police Eyewear. Also, Antonio Banderas and Olga Kurilenka became ambassadors of the advertising campaign for the new paired fragrances Secret Temptation of the Banderas perfume brand. In general, Banderas is actively involved in the business. Since 1997, he has been producing his Antonio Banderas perfume line. There are already 22 fragrances on the market, 13 for men and 9 for women. Antonio personally gets consulted by perfumers and learns the skill of creating new fragrances from them. In addition, since 2009, the actor has been the owner of a vineyard in Spain. He owns 50% of the Anta Banderas winery in Villalba de Duero, which was originally called Anta Bodegas, and produced up to 1.5 million bottles of wine a year, as well as olive oil. Previously, Banderas was the owner of the Posada de Antonio restaurants, but he gave up this business. Also in 2010, he owned the Jack and Jones by Antonio Banderas team that competed in MotoGP motorcycle races in the Moto2 class. Banderas now supports the Malaga Football Club and the Spanish Socialist Workers' Party. Also, the actor is involved in charity work and is a UN Goodwill Ambassador. In 2019, he opened a new theater in his hometown, which is designed to seat more than 800 people. Antonio Banderas also owns various properties. During his marriage to Melanie Griffith, he owned a mansion in the elite historic Los Angeles area of Hancock Park. They originally purchased the mansion for $4.2 million in 1999, then bought the adjacent plot for $1.3 million and included it in the estate. The interior of the mansion is designed in a classical style. During the divorce, the estate was put up for sale and just 10 days later it was sold for $16 million. Melanie Griffith got the house in Aspen after the divorce. Located in the mountains, the house is filled with light and comfort. Large panoramic windows, an abundance of wood trim, and decorative details make the rooms lively and comfortable. At first, the ex-spouses planned to sell the house for $10 million, then they leased it, and in the end, they only got $4 million. During the divorce process, Antonio bought out a stake in their New York apartment from Griffith for $4 million. The apartment with the elegant interior is located in a prestigious building. In 2018, the actor put the apartment up for sale, asking for $8 million. In 2014, 
It was reported that the actor had purchased a penthouse in Malaga. It is said that in the vicinity of Malaga, Terry Molinos, and Benel Madeta alone, the actor acquired seven houses and 14 non-residential properties, including a seaport bar and restaurant. It is known that in 2008, the authorities ordered Banderas to demolish part of the estate called the Seagull, located in Marbella, since the house was built by the former owners without obtaining permits. The actor initiated a legal battle. Banderas now lives in England in a mansion in the county of Tsere. The new acquisition cost him 3.1 million euros. The house has huge windows and beam ceilings. It is filled with light, and the actor simply adores the place. He even rides his bicycle in the forest and the surrounding areas. By the way, in the Banderas fleet, besides a bicycle, we can find a Bentley Continental Supersports, Porsche 911, Cabriolet, Audi A7, and even a private jet. What made Antonio Banderas so successful? What do you think? If you like this video, leave a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you do not miss anything interesting.